few years into the study, Rampino stumbles on something huge. A point in the Earth's history where the ocean temperatures plummeted. At the time, I thought, there's something wrong here. This isn't normal. This isn't the way climate usually works. It usually works on a much slower, more steady basis. Rampino's sea cores were telling him that the ocean's temperatures had dropped five degrees Celsius in just a few millennia, which in marine temperature terms is the blink of an eye. Normally, it takes hundreds of thousands of years for the oceans to cool this much. temperature change that we saw in these deep sea core records was something like five or six degrees Celsius. That's 10 degrees or more Fahrenheit. Not over 100,000 years or even 10,000 years, but over just a few thousand years. Now, climatically, that's very surprising. That's very, very fast. That's very catastrophic. The only thing Rampino could imagine that would bring on this sudden cooling was an ice age, a catastrophic event that could severely impact life on the planet. It was like flipping the switch on the global climate system from hot to cold. Rampino calculated the date of this cataclysmic drop in the world's ocean temperatures. It happened around 75,000 years ago, the same time Zelinsky's ice core was showing massive amounts of sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. Both scientists, unaware of each other's work, researching areas of the world separated by thousands of miles, stumbled across two different anomalies linked by a single date. It was a major breakthrough. I was finding a cooling event at 75,000 years ago, and Greg, I later found out, was finding an increase in the chemistry of the ice cores 75,000 years ago. And we got together and realized that we had the same problem. When you can look at something from different angles and see the same major result, you know you have found something that was huge, something that was a major force on the Earth's climate system. The cooling of the planet and the sulfate in the atmosphere might be explained by asteroid impacts. But after comparing their evidence, both scientists feel there can be only one culprit. Occasionally, volcanoes can violently propel this much sulfate into the atmosphere. But for the scientists, there's still a problem. Even the world's greatest volcanoes produce only a tiny fraction of the sulfate Greg Zielinski had found. And certainly no volcano in recorded history has forced ocean temperatures to plummet this much. The scientists are now looking for something truly exceptional. A volcano hundreds of times more explosive and sulfurous than any yet known to man. This man has no idea he's about to help find the answer. What's unusual about Lake Toba is its dimensions are incredible. It's 100 kilometers long from that end up to that end over there. It's 30 kilometers wide from the upper rim behind us over to the other side. Another reason is its incredible depth. For decades, Craig has been trying to solve the mysteries he sees in and around this huge stretch of water. What we're trying to do out here today with this depth finder is to get a profile of the lake bottom. Because by getting a profile of the lake bottom, we can interpret the history of Lake Toba much better.
we're starting to get a profile over here. You can see it dropping right off. 23 meters. Hey, that cliff face, it just must keep on going straight down almost. Most lakes drop away gradually from the shore, but Craig thinks this may not be the case here. It's 175 meters deep already. That's, that's incredible for just a lake. The incredibly steep slopes that drop off from the landscape up above. In some places, it's a, the, the rim is over a kilometer above lake level, sheer drops down to the lake, and then as you can see on this profile, it continues down beneath the lake with that sheer drop off. Some special geologic processes must be involved to form this. This steep line on the screen is clear evidence that Lake Toba is not just a normal lake, but a huge hole in the Earth's crust, suggesting to Craig that the whole area has some kind of major geological event in its past. But the sheer dimensions of the lake are not the only clue as to its origin. Deep climb above the waterline reveals something else. Wow, that looks incredible. I need to go get a closer look at that stuff. Craig is particularly intrigued by the large deposits of ash, which he's finding several hundred meters above the lake. Wow, there's some really big pumices in this. I can see quartz crystals, I can see biotite. And there's a lot of ash in here. This is all the same stuff. Must mean something really big happened here. This rock face and the ash contained within it are part of a far bigger picture. Samples like this have been tracked down by scientists over thousands of miles around Lake Toba. But the problem for Craig has always been pinning down how exactly such massive amounts of ash came to be in the area in the first place. The answer to Craig's problem can be found on the other side of the globe. In the summer of 1994, Craig decided to send man some sort of ash from around the lake. Because John Skate is one people on the who might be able of Craig's gate is where his ability to identify things of ash he uses his thing to move likely to fly the amazing thing is if you give John a piece of ash he can tell you the volcano that made it no matter where this ash was found we try to find out where the ash comes from its parent volcano and in that framework it's exactly like a DNA signature Every single volcanic eruption that has ever taken place on the planet is unique. Volcanic ash contains chemical clues of where and when a volcano exploded. Volcanic ash starts life as this, magma deep inside a volcano. During an eruption, this magma races to the surface of the Earth. When it hits the air with enough force, it explodes into tiny pieces of volcanic ash. 